nature of God as revealed in Christ. Turn your Bibles to the book of James chapter 1 verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. So we began to locate this area of the wrath of God, especially what it means in the Old Testament. Um, you must try to know, especially in the course of Bible study, I've taken time to teach you this in this house. Um, you must try to, when you study the Bible, to find out where certain statements were made and who those statements were particularly addressed to. Um, because sometimes you'll find some statements that were made in the Old Testament that are of no reference to the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that our fathers, all our fathers, this all our fathers is not referring to our spiritual fathers of today. He's referring to the fathers, the Jews, the Jews, all our fathers. He's talking to the Jews in the Old Testament. Our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Next verse. And we are all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Next verse. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Next verse. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Next verse. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. So now if you do not rightly divide the word, you will think... He is saying the same thing that happens to those fathers will happen to us. But that's not what he's talking about here. He said these are examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Now if this scripture is not rightly divided, you will think he is talking about lust here. But he's not talking about lust here. But the lust and these other things were the things that ultimately led to the thing he is addressing. If you look at the next verse neither be idolaters are where some of them as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play next verse neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand so if it's not rightly divided you will think he's dealing with the subject of fornication here but just keep following the thought pattern contextually neither let us tempt christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer he's still giving you you know different things that they engaged themselves in that ultimately brought them to what did not please god because these are not the things that ultimately didn't please god even though god has no pleasure in these things but this was not the crux of the matter next verse now all these things happen unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition unto whom the ends of the world are come what was written there if you read contextually on what they did that didn't please god was unbelief god was in pleased with them because of their unbelief because the reason why they all died in the hands of fairy serpents and all that was because of unbelief but there's a generation that did not die joshua and caleb and the reason why joshua and caleb were different from these ones that died was not because joshua and caleb did not have sin or mistakes it's because joshua and caleb had another spirit of faith they believed these people didn't believe they were overthrown because of unbelief and that's why it's important to contextually study the scriptures and these examples are not our examples because these people were not a part of the church there was no church the church was born after jesus rose from the dead that's why the church is called the church of the firstborn so what was written to them is not written to us because we are not them they are not us and our situation differs from theirs and that's why the scriptures must be rightly studied must be rightly divided very shortly you will understand why i went through all of those 
uh, illustrations to get to where I'm going to. So we began to talk about God's wrath. You know, another word for it is God's anger. Another word for it is God's judgment. God's wrath, God's anger, God's judgment against sin or against individuals. If you study in the Old Testament was where you will see all of those mention of wrath, anger, judgment. Therefore, the wrath, the anger, and the judgment of God was before the cross. Before the cross. Look at Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, we Christians, we like to use weeping may endure for the night, joy coming in the morning. But what he's talking about here is not just an isolated weeping endure for the night. It is as it connects to the anger. In the anger you weep. But the anger is for a moment. When the mercy comes, joy comes. Contextually, that's what he's talking about. So joy, weeping and enduring for the night, joy coming in the morning is as it relates to the anger of God which is but for a moment. So when you see the anger and the wrath of God and the judgment of God, it's, it's before the cross. Every time you read about it in the scripture, it's before the cross. Another scripture, Psalm 103 verse 9. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. So, under the Old Testament, they were very aware of God's anger against sin, but also, they had an insight into God's mercy and kindness and grace. They had some insight. That's why they could say that he may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. That's why they could say his anger is for a moment. That's why they could say his anger does not endure forever. So they had an idea, even though they talked about the anger, but they also talked about the mercy and the grace of God. Now, so when you begin to hear about these kind of things, what comes to your mind is that maybe God is a schizophrenic God. A God that you cannot really determine what his mood is. Like God is suffering from mood swings. When he's happy, he does good things. When he's angry, he brings judgment. When he's happy, he blesses. When he's angry, he causes. So now, God is one kind of sick patient that we cannot predict what he is going to do per time. So therefore, that's the impression religion gives concerning God. So a child of God will say, well, I'm praying, but I don't know if God will answer because I don't know his mood today. So let me just try. So we try, and he that cometh must believe. But you can't believe until you are sure of his nature. How is God like? What's his nature? Does he suffer from mood swings? Is he happy sometimes and angry sometimes? Does he even get angry? We want to know who God is. We want to have an insight, a revelation of our father. Because you can't relate with a father whom you don't know. For you to have an effective, vibrant, living relationship with a father, you've got to have a full revelation of who your father is. And the majority of the church world don't have an idea of who the father is. Because they have this idea that sometimes God is angry, sometimes God is happy. On Sunday we even said that, I've even had people say that the God of the Old Testament was always quick in judgment. But they don't know why the God of today is slow. So it's like God has changed. Before, yeah, he will judge. But now, he has advanced in technology. He doesn't judge very fast. That gives us an idea of a schizophrenic God, a God that cannot be trusted, a God that cannot be relied on because at any time his mood may change and it will disappoint you. And at any time his mood may be good and he will bless you. So with that mindset, you can't have a good relationship with God. So that's why we must unveil the true nature of God. Am I communicating here? Oh yes, in the Old Testament. If you just do something, you die inside church. But today people just do things and get away with it. So it's like God of the Old Testament was more furious. The God of today is a weakling. 
It gives you that idea. But that cannot be true. And that's why the scriptures must be rightly divided. And friends, we're going to have an adventure this weekend. God punish the devil. But the scriptures tell us categorically, specifically, clearly, authoritatively, and authentically that God is the same yesterday, today, forever. He changed it not. I, the Lord, I change it not. So, if God was quick in judgment before, he is quick in judgment now, he will still be quick in judgment. And if he's not quick in judgment today, but it looks like he was quick in judgment before, we have to examine that judgment. We have to examine that judgment. Because he changed it not. If he was quick in judgment before, he should be quick in judgment now because he doesn't change. And he should be quick in judgment tomorrow. I, the Lord, I change it not. If he was quick in answering prayer yesterday, he should be quick in answering prayer now. If he's no more quick in answering prayer, it means something has changed in him. And if he doesn't change, and he was quick in answering prayer then and he's not quick in answering prayer now we need to examine that quick in answering prayer in the light of jesus because when there's any confusion about anything in the scripture you must come back and look at it through the eyes of jesus because that's the explanation of all things praise god so they say, you know, I serve God with all my strength, yet I am not blessed. Why am I not blessed? Those are the kind of questions we want to answer. Why is it that sometimes when I pray, it looks like God doesn't answer? But in order for us to, to deal with all of that, we've got to deal with what we're dealing with right now. It gives you the impression that God is unreliable. God is undependable. And um, there's a lot of human opinions about God. You didn't hear me. There are a lot of human, human human opinion about god and this human opinion has been superimposed on the interpretation of scriptures human opinions about god superimposed on the scriptures so therefore when you look at the scriptures the human opinion is what you see and not the actual scriptures because that's what religion has done over the years to sell certain opinions of god to people giving people an idea of a god that does not exist and that's why the teaching of the world becomes essential to bring us into the true revelation of who god truly is i didn't say the nature of god i said the true nature of god the true nature not the nature of god the true one because there is a lot of human opinions about the nature of god but what we're examining now is the true nature and somebody said how are you sure to be the true nature as revealed in christ because ebola tona john 1 18 no man had seen god at any time how many men have seen God before? Are you sure? How many men have seen God at any time? So whatever Moses said about God will not be accurate. Whatever Moses said about God cannot be accurate. Whatever Elijah says about God cannot be accurate. Is that true? Whatever Jeremiah said about God cannot all be accurate. There will be pockets of truth in what they said but there will also be their own opinions there will be their own opinions based on their perception hey there will be their own opinion based on their own perception of who god is that's why when jesus showed up he he declared a disclaimer he announced a disclaimer once and for all he said no man in case anybody said something before about god that conflicts with what i'm about to say remember none of them have seen the father before that's to say if my own disagrees with their own throw their own away it must have been their opinion coming out of their perception i'm teaching good now which is not accurate but this is the one to hear no man had seen god at any time the only begotten son who is the only begotten son 
for God so loved the world that he gave he is only so the only begotten son which is where in the bosom of the father he had declared him so the botamonga the only person that can unveil the father to us is the son of the father who is in the bosom of the father that's the only person because before him nobody else teaching good john 14 verse 8 philip saith unto him lord show us the father and it sufficeth us show us who now remember jesus said no man has seen the father but me now philip says jesus show us the father because what we're dealing with here is the true nature of god show us the father that will be satisfied it sufficeth us next verse jesus said unto him have i been so long time with you and yet has thou not known me philip he that has seen me had seen the father and how sayest thou then show us the father so jesus is the revelation of the father he that has seen me jesus is the exclusive custodian you didn't hear me he's the sole exclusive custodian of the father so therefore if it is not jesus it can never be god you didn't hear me if it is not jesus it can never be god never anything that is not jesus is not god why jesus is god ah, you see philip i'm surprised have you been this long with me and you don't know the father you've been with the father this is the father which other father are you looking for <laughs> jesus is the face of the father teaching good if you're with me shout i hear i prophesy your relationship with god is moving to a higher gear Amen. next verse believest thou not that i am in the father and the father in me the words that i speak unto you i speak not of myself but the father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works we're laying foundation so to know whether the father gets angry or not will be revealed in christ this should solve a lot of problems philip i've been this long with you and you do not know who the father is when you see me i'm the face of the father believe me if it's not jesus it's not god jesus is the father the father is jesus somebody said give me another scripture his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god father. everlasting father that's why in john 10 30 who was speaking who is the father eh? is jesus the father is the father jesus is jesus the father is the father jesus we are one when you see me you see the father i and my father are one next verse then the jews took up stones again because now this is blasphemy follow me carefully this is blasphemy and the punishment for blasphemy was stoning the 
they took stones to stone him for blasphemy next verse jesus answered them many good works have i shown you from my father for which of those works do you stone me next verse the jews answered him saying for a good work we stoned him not we like blind eyes opening we like cripples walking we like water turned to wine we like the good works but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself god you are making yourself is blasphemy how can you where were you born is mary not your mother how can you say you are god do you know god carry stones then verse 34 jesus answered them is it not written in your law i said you are gods 35 if you call them gods unto whom the word of god came and the scriptures cannot be broken for which of these works do you stone me no we stone thee not for works we like the works but that you a man make yourself god he said but i didn't make myself i am god it's not a making that's who i am glory to god teaching here you're catching if you're with me on the same chapter shout a powerful amen now let's look at job there's you love you love this thing about about job human opinions about god job 42 verse 1 then job answered the lord and said then job said i know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge therefore have i uttered that i understood not i uttered what i did not understand this is job confessing i uttered what i did not understand things too wonderful for me which i knew not i was just talking i was just talking next verse here i beseech thee and i will speak i will demand of thee and declare thou unto me next verse i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear job is saying all the things i said we are opinions of men god i related with you based on people's opinion i didn't know you for myself it's what people said about you that i bought and ran with and i think that is a problem with the church today people don't know god so whatever opinion people are selling to them they buy and they run with and that's why we have a contradiction of god's nature some say he's fast some say he's slow some say he's judgmental some say he's merciful because nobody takes the time to study and find out the true nature of god as revealed by the sole custodian of god's revelation christ jesus there are other things that are huh, i've been hearing of you it's just what people told me that i've been running with you say but now my eyes see thee now i know you now i have understood that you are not the one behind my calamity now i have understood that all the death of my children all the disaster that befell my business you are not the one behind it i used to think you were the one because that's the opinion people gave me i think some people also need to repent because they have accused god for what god is innocent of based on the opinion people sold to them uh, about the god that when he's happy he blesses when he's angry he kills job 42 1 the message bible job answered i'm convinced you can do anything and everything nothing and no one can upset your plans you ask who is this muddying the water ignorantly confusing the issue second guessing my purposes i admit it i was the one are you in the house job say look i admit father i am the one that was muddying the water ignorantly confusing the issue and second guessing your purposes god i admit i'm the confucianist i'm the one responsible for giving a wrong impression of you 
I'm the problem. I, I, I admit. I was the one. I babbled on about things far beyond me. Made small talk about wonders way over my head. You told me, listen. And let me do the talking. Let me ask the questions. You give the answers. I admit. I once lived by rumors of you. How did I live before? By rumors. That's how many people are living. By rumors, you know. Say, God is a killer. Yes, God is a killer. God, kill, 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 kill. The prayer is motivated by rumor. Now, I have it all first hand. From my own eyes and ears. And you know, it was after this that the captivity ended. The moment he caught a revelation of the true nature of God, all that rubbish gave way. All those things that make it look like God is not answering your prayer is because you are carrying a rumor impression. The things delaying your breakthrough is the wrong impression of God. All the religious mindsets that have been sold to you, that you have to fast for 100 days before God will know you're serious. Hey! Jesus fasted for eternity on your behalf. Three days and three nights, no eating, no drinking. He was fasting. And those three days and three nights, he brought eternity together into time. And when he finished it, he met the requirements that guarantee answered prayer. So now you can lift your hand and shout, Father, I thank you that you hear me. Always. Not sometimes, not once in a while. You hear me always. You hear me always. Why? The requirements that guarantee you are hearing me has been met. Not just met, over met. Glory to God. Rumor, second guessing. God rebuked him. Rebuked Job for speaking without knowledge. God rebuked him. We have had things. But now we need to know it ourselves. We have said that God's anger. When God gets angry now. We have projected God as an erratic God. He gets angry and he cools down. We second guess him. Because we are motivated by rumor pull your neighbor's leg say stop the rumor <laughs> stop the rumor you don't know god by rumor uh, you know him first hand in christ that's why christ in you first hand first hand he's not outside he's inside first hand revelation of who the father no, 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 no. We're not second guessing. No. We are first hand revelation of the Father in Christ. Are we teaching here? That should change a lot of things. All your fears should start roasting now. Fear of God will get you. God is after you. God will soon arrest you. You think you can go free? God does not sleep, oh. You can't touch me and go free. God will catch you. Eh, eh, that's, that's rumor. God doesn't catch people. If God catch one, he must catch all. Including you that is praying for God to catch somebody. There's something you have done that God should catch you for. So if God should catch that person, he should catch you also. I'm teaching now. He's going to catch anybody. You too, there's something you have done before that God should have caught you for. And if he didn't catch you, he should not catch anybody else. He's not a catcher. He didn't join the ushering department to be catching. Glory to God. Jesus has been caught on our behalf. Tell your neighbor, the last time I checked, God is happy with you. I'm taking time because this is 
this is a very uh, this is this is some territory and I'm taking my time because I'm also aware of my TV audience and I want to be sure everybody is on the same page because the essence for this teaching is not to confuse you is to clear you and bring you to a place of liberty in Christ where you enjoy Jesus we are even those that don't know Jesus when they see your face they start asking questions there must be something you know that we don't know why are you smiling like this it's called the freedom of grace what is it called the freedom of grace the freedom of grace stand fast in this liberty we are with Christ has set you free and be not entangled again that means you were once there with the yoke of bondage and what is bondage religion spirit of bondage again to fear so we have seen that the reason why God was angry about sin in the Old Testament was because he was going to be at the scene himself he was angry because he was going to bear it himself. He couldn't have been angry to us man. Because no man has the capacity to contain the anger of God. No man. No man. Do you know that there are some very bad men? You know bad? Bad. Some real bad guys. If they decide to face you with anger, you won't survive. Those are human beings. Their anger can destroy a city. Those are just human beings. Imagine the anger of the creator. Nobody can stand it. So when people say God is angry. Eh, and because God is angry. That is why you broke your leg. That is a petty anger. If all the anger of God is to break somebody's leg. It is not anger. Because people by mistake break leg. Jesus revealed it to us. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So anywhere you see killing and stealing and destruction, who is behind it? The thief. Who is the thief? Jesus called him Satan. He said to them, you are of your father who? The devil. John 8, 44. You are of your father who? The devil. And the lust of your father? Yeah. So when you see arm robbery, those arm robbers are motivated by their father and the arm robbery act is the execution of the lust of their father the devil i didn't pray well that is why the arm robbers came eh, eh. it's not because you didn't pray well it's because there are evil people that are used by satan to execute and carry out his lust it's not god getting you Is the fact that the world is full of wicked people and we shall examine that in the next few days you will have a lot of explanation as to why some things happen and some things didn't happen now some of you have said but god didn't you know that i'm robbers are going to come to my house and deal with me god knew god why didn't you stop them it is not god that stops them because it is not god that sent them But God could have stopped them. He could have stopped them. He couldn't have stopped them. Because he didn't send them. So how could they have been stopped? By me. How? The Holy Ghost. Must have given you an idea. That something was coming. But you were too busy. To take authority over what was coming. And because you didn't take authority. There's nothing that can be done. Hey. Job say I've been saying things. Eh? And second guessing. By rumor. But now I see you. I know that you're not the one behind it. All these calamities and evil things and bad, bad things. So God, you're not the one. Ah! then that now makes you really understand your authority so you can put the devil constantly where he belongs and live a triumphant life i'm teaching now because if you're not sure whether it is god or satan you will never take authority you say well, maybe it's god teaching me a lesson god cannot use evil to teach you a lesson 
let no man say when he's tempted i'm tempted of god for god cannot be tempted of evil neither tempted he any man dead or alive good or bad sinner or unbeliever or christiana god does not tempt anybody hallelujah so jesus sacrifice did not only deal with the sin of people when he was here his sacrifice dealt with the sin of the people before he came why because the anger of god was that god was going to judge sin on himself the anger of god is always because when he finally judges the sin of men it will be on his head hebrews 9 50 and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament the sin of adam the sin of abraham the sin of elijah elisha the sin of jeremiah all the sins of the men under the old testament were judged on jesus the sins of people under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance jesus didn't only bear your sin he bore the sins of those before you and with all due respect nobody here is 1000 years old so when jesus died he died for your future sins you didn't hear me he died for your future sins because when he died you have not been born yet that is death covered your birth and covered your lifetime and covered your children that are yet to be born and covered your children's children and covered your children's children's children and covered your children's 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 children and covered he paid for it eternally so there's nothing you will do today that is not paid for that's why when we teach like this they say it's a license to sin it's a license to freedom total freedom freedom from anything the devil has done see i hear are you understanding how many of you after you hear this kind of teaching you want to go and steal okay how many of you after you hear this kind of teaching you want to go and smoke cigarette this kind of teaching makes you realize what god has done in you you live here empowered through or false I get excited every time i come by the world i open my bible and i just sit on my chair and i start dancing because I, this is over the top good news over the top good news he paid for the sins of those under the old testament the first testament he paid for all their own paid for our own and paid for those unborn so the judge the anger of god was poured on jesus he poured it god didn't pour his anger on anybody the anger was offloaded all of god's anger was offloaded on jesus all of it and jesus took it well he didn't take it partially and he didn't take it instrumentally he took it well he died once and for all once and for all praise jesus Woo! wave your right hand and shout i love you jesus in genesis 2 16 and the lord god commanded the man saying of every three of the garden thou mayest freely eat next verse but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die i have told you that this statement god gave to adam was not a reaction it was not a reaction it's not like adam has sinned then god comes to say for sinning you shall die before anything happened ahead of time god told adam that tree has the capacity to give birth to death he told adam the potential that was in that tree and what that tree was capable of doing it was not a warning it 
was a love revelation. In love, he was revealing to Adam, look, that tree is like this. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. Because if you eat it, it will end in eating. It will kill you. That's a loving father. That's a loving father. God was not reacting. God never reacts. If God reacts, he's no more God. He sees the beginning from the end. And the end from the beginning. So he doesn't react. No. Yes. It's like saying, look, don't touch that naked wire. It has the capacity to shock you and kill you. And then you now say, okay, I have heard. Don't worry, I will handle it. Sure, <laughs> you're handling it. You and the wire, who is handling who? Who handle who? You handle it, then it handled you. It is handling you now. Say, you small hand. Pam, then they carry hammer. Small hand, you collect big one. God was revealing to man in love. That look, don't do that. That tree is capable of killing and destroying you. Man never, listen, man never hearkened. Man went ahead and messed up himself and destroyed himself and gave himself out to calamity. It wasn't God that brought evil to the world. Sin came through man. Death came by man. So God said, okay, since man has messed up, let me judge the penalty of man's fall on myself. Hebrews 9, 26 to 28. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself let me ask all of you intelligently and i need your born again self to listen to me carefully and answer when he sacrificed himself what did that imply from this scripture i read again then i ask you the question again for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself question when he gave himself as a sacrifice what did that what implication did that have on the condition of the world sin was put away question is there sin why correct now that's deep <laughs> when you put away something it is put away it's no more there i read again eh i read again because you know Op opinion rumor 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 is a problem as a praise rumor is no good let me ask all of you questions how many of you have ever been happy when you had a rumor about yourself eh? you had a rumor see he has two children outside marriage from two other women and then the thing is spreading all over town when you hear it, you say, <laughs> glory to God. What a smart man I am. Three women at a go. You'll be happy? You won't be happy. You don't want rumor. So the same way you're not happy about rumor, God is not happy about rumor. <laughs> Especially rumor that take away from his credibility. If it's even rumor of his goodness, it is a good rumor. <laughs> he can manage that. But rumor that says is the one that killed that woman's child because the woman did not pay tight. See, the woman didn't pay tight. Even though pastor has been talking tight, she didn't pay the tight. So at the point of delivery, the tight, 
by the neck of the child. Oh, the child came out and said, eh, eh. You could tell that something was tying the neck of the child. God killed the child because of tight. That is so wicked a rumor. God is not happy with rumor. That is why people like us teaching the true nature of God as revealed in Christ. Oh, God is too happy with us. Yeah. And anything outside Christ is a rumor. Uh -huh. Anything that you teach outside Christ, as it has to do with God, is a rumor. So you can imagine the rumors going on. You can imagine the level of rumor going on everywhere. All over the world. Giving impressions of God that is not. Painting God in images and pictures that take away from who he is. That's why Jesus had to show up and say, Hey, no man, has ever, all this rumor is a lie. Only me. And look at me. I am the only person that can show the father to you people. This is how the father is. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So anywhere there is healing, the father. Anywhere there is deliverance, the father. Anywhere good things are happening, the father. Anywhere there is bad, Satan, the thief, commit not to kill and to destroy. It's so easy. It's revealed in Christ. Jesus is the explanation of all things. We have the mind of Christ, the understanding of Christ. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. So Jesus put away sin. He did what? By our city, talk to me. He did what? Put away sin. How? By the sacrifice of himself next verse verse 27 even as it is appointed unto man wants to die where is this wants to die the wages of sin so because man sin man has to die so jesus came took the sin that man sin therefore because the sin of mankind was put on jesus and the punishment the reward for sin is dead so jesus sacrificed himself and died and he has kept that appointment it is a one-time appointment and jesus tasted death for every man therefore no death for me why he died my death i live his life glory to god lift your hand shout yes, yes. he took it away he took it away none left for me he took the judgment he took the death he took the calamity he took the reward the reward of my sin was given to jesus he collected the reward on my behalf and now I enjoy the outcome of what he has paid for. That was not due me. It wasn't due me. I couldn't afford it. But because Jesus took the one I could have, that I afforded, which I could not handle. He took what I afforded that I couldn't handle. He took away. So by taking that away, what he, without sin, was fit to receive he gave it up for me to receive so he took what i deserved and gave me what i did not deserve it is called grace that's grace he took what was mine and gave me what was not mine and what was not mine was too good to be mine it was too good to be mine. That is why many people cannot understand the message. Because it is too good to be true. But if the good news of the gospel is not too good to be true, it is not gospel. Because gospel means good news. 28. So Christ eh, was once offered to bear the sins of how many? Many. And unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time? Why is he going to appear without sin? Because he has taken it away. No more sin. When he went to heaven, he went without sin. Because when he went into the grave, he destroyed sin. He 
rose without sin he went without sin he's coming back without sin to receive us without sin Amen. glory to god Woo! he will present you to himself you are not going to present yourself no 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 he himself based on what he has done he will now bring you and present you through his finished work through his finished work he will present you before the father blameless a church without spot without wrinkle without any such thing a holy church holy brethren glory to god oh glory to god wave your hands and shout thank you jesus without sin unto salvation without sin unto soteria hallelujah first john chapter 2 verse 2 tells us jesus is the propitiation for our sins the word propitiation deals with anger the word propitiation deals with anger it means to be pacified jesus is the pacifier for sin by reason of his sacrifice is the propitiation second corinthians 5 21 god made him to be seen who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in christ he is the propitiation he is the pacifier jesus was offered to pacify the anger of god he pacified it on my behalf so Jesus' death and sacrifice makes sin null and void. <laughs> Jesus' death and sacrifice makes sin null and void. Null and void. That is the weakness of sin. When you understand what I'm teaching you, sin loses every authority it had. Amen. I said amen when people say well god is angry with you you will not get a good job because the way you live is not good that's a rumor did you hear what i said what is that is a rumor how are you sure you will marry how are you sure you will marry you lived a very filthy life as an unbeliever you were in all party houses you were clubbing clubbing up and down back and front inside and out you were clubbing bad girl you can't get husband and then you just find out that she's the one that got husband before good girl they wonder why 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 is the grace of god that bringeth salvation it has appeared to all men you're not going to get a husband because you were a good girl as a single girl you're going to get a husband because every woman should get a husband finish case close you're fasting for husband you don't believe that fasting is a sign of unbelief because if unbeliever don't fast for it and get it how much more if god has to fabricate a husband he will fabricate it the scriptures cannot be broken in christ all prophecies are fulfilled therefore i shall not lack my mate you walk in the confidence of revelation and you stand tall with your shoulders the earth will rearrange itself to produce a correct man for you gives your father pleasure to give you the kingdom teaching good oh he gives you the kingdom look look god doesn't give you things he gives you himself i am your shield and your exceeding great reward he didn't say i will give you reward he said i am the reward i am the reward the reward is not things the reward is me when you have jesus you've been rewarded jesus is the reward of your faith I just said something now if you heard what i said jesus is the reward of your faith when you believe the reward for believing is jesus and with jesus comes everything it's a reward of your faith church people are busy writing 30 things god must do for me today 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 jesus must answer me today 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 jesus must answer me today today I have news he already answered 
you are late before you call all the promises of god in him you didn't hear me all the promise of god where where are you where are the promises where are you where are the promises and what are they in him yes and amen all things are they are yours all all the promises not some of them all the promises of god in christ jesus where you are are yes and amen you don't need to pray one more prayer to get what god promised you he promised and he will do it faithful is he who collect he himself without your cajoling and without your manipulation the caller is responsible to be the doer yes he performed all things for you all this needy needy christian lifestyle is a rumor 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 has created christians to be so needy praying for what unbelievers don't pray for and yet unbelievers get it and they with all their prayer don't get it so they also come up with a new rumor setting up shops across the road noisily hawking their wares god is good 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 every good and every perfect gift comet from above from the father of light with whom there is no variableness nor a shadow he doesn't change his mind what he has said about you he doesn't change his mind it will happen in fact it has happened in christ where has it happened in christ you don't have any problem you don't have any problem the last time i checked just few minutes ago he was smiling cheer up you sense of god there's nothing to worry about nothing to make you feel afraid nothing to make you doubt remember god has never failed so why not trust him and say you will be sorry you worry at all tomorrow morning be of good cheer i have he didn't say i will overcome i have over it's not something we are going to do it's something we have done cheer up and see it happen glory Your father wants to give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. It's his good pleasure. It makes him happy. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet seen us. Now why did he die? Verse 9. Much more than be now justified by his blood you shall be saved from wrath through him that is to say by his blood we are no more victims of wrath no wrath he died to take away the wrath jesus died and took away the wrath of sin much more than being now justified by his blood which is his death we shall be saved from wrath now we shall be saved implies that this wrath is not a wrath of today is a future wrath but by his death his death has kept us away from that future wrath The wrath of God is not for today. It's a futuristic event. But by the death of Christ that I have accepted, that wrath does not have my name in its register. I'm safe from wrath. I said I'm safe from wrath. By his blood. Hallelujah. Saved from wrath. Verse 10. 
For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. In the death of Jesus, there is reconciliation. Jesus died to reconcile because the power Satan has is the separation of man from God. But Jesus keeps Satan of that power by reconciling man back to God through his death. Paralyzed. 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 Ah, Satan lost it all on Calvary. On Calvary all strange things are over. They are over. Paralyzed. Different <laughs> Pastor said, this is serious one. <laughs> These are songs we used to sing in those days. All strange things are over. They are over. Paralyzed. Satan is paralyzed, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public show of the devil. Somebody asked me, Ah, Papa, where are all these old, old songs coming from? They are coming from the well, <laughs> the reservoir. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody shout, I'm reconciled to God. Satan has no power over me anymore. The power Satan has. Is separation from God. I'm no more separated. I'm united. He can't touch God. He can't touch me. He can't touch me. He can't touch God. I am my father. I one. Glory. I said glory. I said glory. Gospel of John 1 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith behold the lamb of god what is the work of the lamb which take it away what question did he take it away if he took it away is he still there no more sin you didn't hear me no more sin jesus took it away and because he took it, I don't have it. Woo! No more sin. He took away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's why he is called a lamb. Jesus is the sacrificial lamb that appeased the anger of God and took the wrath of God. So no more wrath for me and no more anger and no more judgment. I only have peace. Pastor Praise, you remember that day Jesus was born. The angel stood up and said, Good will, peace towards men. That was the beginning of peace. Because the Prince of Peace was born. He took away the anger and brought reconciliation to mankind. That's the crux of the gospel. He died. He was buried on the third day. He rose. Glory to God. Are you blessed tonight? Jump on your feet. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Wave your right hand and shout, I am saved from wrath. I am reconciled to God. I am accepted in the beloved. Lift your right hand and shout, I stand in him justified. He is in me glorified. I am accepted in the beloved. No sin in my life. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a saint in the sight of God. I please God all the time because I am in Christ Jesus. The pleasure 
of God. Amen. Somebody said, well, you know, God is very angry. Therefore, things will not work for you. Tell him, that's rumor. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of town. That's rumor. You rumor monger. Get out of town. The last time I checked, God was smiling concerning me. Of his own good pleasure. Of his own good pleasure. He has accepted me where? In the beloved. I am my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is bluff. Did you hear what I said? I am my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is what? Love. Religion likes to make people say, Jesus, I love you. I will love you forever. It's a lie. You cannot. Just shut up. Shut your mouth. God never asks you to love him. Never because he knows you cannot. He never asks you to love him. No. He has decided to love you forever. It's unconditional. Because he knows you cannot. So he overlooks your side. He gives you his side. That's why Jude say, keep yourself in the love of God. You, you cannot love who, but stay inside his own. I'm teaching good here. Hearing his love. Not that we love him, but that he loved us. And, and he says, what shall separate us from the love of God, which is where? In Christ, not our love. So I say, but I love you, I love you, I love you forever. Shut up! Don't kill yourself. Just accept his love and be happy. Oh. I'm teaching now. Oh, yeah. yes. Can you love, love God forever? Have you loved yourself forever? You yourself. Have you yourself first? Leave God. Leave, you yourself. Have you loved yourself forever? There are things you do that destroy your body. That is you do it against your body. And you're doing it. And then you say I love God forever. You never love yourself forever you know you shouldn't do you are doing it and destroying your body and you say you love god when the bible say no man yet ever hated his own flesh but there are people hating their flesh so leave that side just say thank you for loving me <laughs> i accept your love i keep myself in your love your love will secure me your love will protect me. Your love will preserve me. Even when I fail, you love me. Even when I make mistake, you love me. Even when I don't qualify, you love me. Even when I'm ready to die, you still love me. Thank you for loving me. There's some of you any day you don't have good clothes. You won't come to church. And you say, I love God forever. If you love God forever, you should come to church naked. After all, Paul said, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall nakedness... That means even nakedness is not enough to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ. That means the love of Christ overlooks even your naked state. Ah! This love is serious. So. It's shocking me seriously. Ah! Lift your right hand and I decree over you tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. No devil will be able to take you from that love. You are kept in the love of God. The love of God secures your life. The love of God secures your marriage. The love of God secures your destiny. The love of God secures your family. The love of God secures your future. In that love you will grow. In that love you will shine. In that love you will excel. In that love you will prevail. In that love you will stand. And in that love you will win every battle of life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father for your love. And I decree tonight that love of God is stronger than sickness. Every sickness in this, this house melts out now. That love is stronger than poverty. Every lack and insufficiency get out of this house. Get out of this house. My TV audience watching, I rebuke blindness. I rebuke deafness. I rebuke dumbness. I come against every spirit of miscarriage that is harassing that marriage. I rebuke every paralysis. Get out in the name of Jesus. The love of God heals your body. The love of God restores your destiny. The love of God overshadows your weakness. Be blessed. 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 In Jesus' mighty name.